Hi. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to speak here. Um, as Jonas said, uh, we have gotten an initiative, uh, an assignment from the government to work on, it has a really long title, the Swedish government, blah, blah, but what it is about is to work on communication and information about uh, vaccinations. And uh, we have chosen to take on a systems approach, which might uh, be a bit difficult because it spread things out, but it's also very interesting to work with. And hopefully we will be able to strengthen our own system to, to, um, to strengthen the program resilience on a long-term basis. And uh, this is a part of a larger investment, larger governmental in investment on child health care and equity in child health care when it comes to reaching out to vulnerable groups, uh, dental care and also vaccinations. And uh, the governmental uh, investment is, I think it's uh, 12, um, 12 million um, euro a year that is given to the regions, and a small part of this has been given to our agency to work with on communication. And so this is not only a large investment, it's the first large investment in vaccine communication, which I think is brilliant, because I'm, as Jonas said, I have a background as communicator, and uh, I will talk about a bit how we see the problem right now, and uh, what, we are, what we are trying to do to deal with it within our system. So it's really about a work in progress. The pillar of the Swedish vaccination systems are really uh, the nurses in child health care and in school health care. They meet all parents and all children, and they, have a, they build a long-term relationship. They're very much trusted by the parents, and uh, this is very important for, for also uh, adhering to, to the vaccination program. And uh, they have their own system for education and work methods. And we, as a public health agency, we were quite square, but we can support them in their work. And we try also to communicate as much as possible in other channels, in media, for example, social media, trying to be out there supporting the healthcare workers' work. And also we try to support parental decision by communicating clearly, of course. And. Uh, the Swedish vaccination program, it's, it consists in, in meetings in childhood health centre and in school. And uh, the coverage is uh, around 97% for all two-year-olds. So, and for HPV, it's around 80%. And we don't, all vaccinations are, are voluntary, we don't have mandatory vaccinations. And they're free up to the age of 18. So what is the problem then in Sweden? It's, we don't have that much problem with convenience or ac access. Um, there is, of course, but in smaller pockets or for individuals. Uh, but you can imagine that there might be a problem with complacency or, uh, as I mentioned, this is the first large investment for, for communication. The situation is quite good, so you haven't really worked that much with it. Uh, we offer a kind of simple um, set of leaflets for the meeting in the uh, in the healthcare centres, and uh, yeah. So what we have done as an agency is to increase our work with collecting data, and this is uh, showing the results from a survey done a couple of years ago that Emma Bistrom, my my colleague, just recently submitted, and you can see that. It relates to, to the presentation that Todd made yesterday. Um, it's about the same numbers. And the problem is that people easily move between these levels. So we have around 80% that accept all vaccinations without hesitation. But then we have this around 20% that might have questions about one or more vaccines. And in Sweden, it's often HPV that creates a lot of questions. Um, so this is really important to us because we have repeatedly during the last year uh, uh, answered a lot of questions from media why hesitancy is increasing so much in Sweden. But the fact is that we don't really see this. We don't really see this picture. 
but we also know that we need more data to be able to, to answer on an uh, on evidence based also in these questions. So we have started out with doing formative research. Uh, we have done two interview studies with school healthcare and child healthcare nurses, and they have confirmed the picture that they feel quite safe and secure in their work situation. But they have also mentioned that when, when parents come and have very specific questions, they need support. So we have been trying to, to increase our work on that and also to develop uh, a, an easy dialogue method that relates to, to aims um, and to motivational interviewing and for, for nurses to, to explore and listen to, to the questions of the parents that are really hesitant. Um, we have also done focus groups with parents, with around 70 parents around Sweden. And we see kind of the same picture there. Um, it's mostly a positive picture. This, these are the words that, or the stories that parents told when we asked them to associate freely in the beginning of the fo focus groups. You see, viktigt, that means important in Swedish. So all the, the large words are positive. And then we also have redsla, uh, which is fear, um, information gaps, which is more, a bit more negative. But all the smaller words are in negative. And this, the interviews showed that um, parents see it as evident that they should uh, vaccinate, but they, they cannot always explain why. So, of course, um, this means that uh, we really need to work on increasing knowledge on the vaccination, on the, the diseases that parents haven't met. Um, and also that we should continue to, to balance in inter media interviews and in our own material, balance the situation and really try to strengthen the, the positive norm there is. So what we have done during this period, uh, we're working, at, I guess I forgot to say that, but we're working with this assignment for two and a half year. So the first six months was much about setting up um, those studies. And then this spring, we have worked a lot on strengthening the, the initiatives that we had already going. For example, for vaccine uh, immunization week, we arranged a partners conference where we invited all healthcare workers and media, um, social media influencers, international partners. And we focused on communication for a whole day, so where we talked about the international perspective, um, the role of the media and social media, and the dialogue, the healthcare worker-parent dialogue. So that was really interesting. And the aim of this was to, to support all actors in the system to, to communicate actively and to learn from each other. So we're going to continue with this yearly in some form. And then also we have tried to strengthen our own outputs communication. So the data that we produce in our annual report, for example, from the national agency. This is about uh, how, how many cases from a disease before the vaccination program was introduced and then how many cases are there now. And we have made visuals and uh, yeah, things to support our communication and others' communication and to use in social media. So, but most important thing that we have done during this year, starting this spring, was to take all activities in the project and with the help of Rob Butler um, at his time uh, in UNICEF, but he worked for us as a consultant as well, uh, and advised us how to use the Gavi demand promotion framework. Uh, and it was really exciting to see how could we map all the activities and initiatives that we knew that we needed to do, that we had already started in some cases, and that we felt also were really difficult to take forward. So by mapping all the activities within these five areas, I've simplified it a bit for, for our setting, but it's, service, um, partnership, 
manage risk and strengthen <coughs> preparedness, stakeholder relations, and then data about um, attitudes. And um, this has led us to really increase our focus on risk preparedness, for example, and among other things. You see some examples of, of activities that we have done uh, in these areas. And uh, yeah, uh, this has been a really interesting uh, work. And what we hope to get uh, in place is products and routines to support um, our work and to support healthcare workers and parents in their decision. And then on a long-term basis to really be able to strengthen resilience and to do the right things. Um, so, and this is, uh, that this has been, has came in place, is this way of working is um, to a large extent thanks to Anne Lindstrand, who was my former boss uh, before leaving for WHO. And uh, yeah, I think I'll stop there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>